this is very exciting because this now means that I can run some tests that I've been wanting to do. More on that later. But what is it? This is the Omega 300, specifically designed for 300 blackout. However, it can be swapped to other things like all 30 cal and anything under. So, first off, here's the can. Pretty lightweight. I should have brought a scale. Oh, man. No biggie. Uh, I'll look it up and put whatever they say the weight is fully configured like this. It does come pre-installed with a direct thread attachment. Plus, I forget what they call this, but it's a muzzle brake, essentially. You can get a flush 30 cal end cap if you don't want the muzzle brake, but to each their own. Then we also get the QD backplate. We can just take this one off, throw this on, which is what I will be doing uh, eventually. We get a, I believe this is a 5 8 by 24 um, muzzle brake. I'll, if I'm wrong, I'll put up what it is. And we get Silencer Co's wrenches. Very helpful. So we get two of these guys. I'm pretty sure it's so that we can, you know, leverage one of their special tools, which is awesome. We will need these to remove end caps. That is what all of these holes are for right there. You just line this guy up and then boom, it sits in there. We turn it however we need to. All right, now, cool, love a sticker. I'm not sure how I feel about red. Uh, rock set, I don't like rock set actually. Uh, I've always had bad experiences with it. And by bad experiences, I mean it just doesn't work all that great. But we got some shims, that's awesome, in case you don't just keep shims around, because I'm a weirdo and I work on guns. Uh, product registration, which I probably will not do. Not sure how I feel about that. Maybe I will, since this is such a special item. A field manual. I don't see why that's any different than a normal manual, because I'm not probably taking this with me in the field. That's good to know. Cool. Neat. And then a nice little carrying bag. That's handy. Um, don't put hot suppressors in these bags that you get, by the way. Yeah, they're, they're not meant to have hot suppressors in them. So that's cool. This one feels a little different. You might be able to, but I highly doubt it. Now, back to those tests I was wanting to run. Um, here it is. That's sticky. It is sticky. Weird. I'll have to end up wiping that off. There's some tests I've been curious about. First, uh, I want to see how a baffled suppressor compares to a flow-through suppressor. Um, no, they're not from the same company because my flow-through suppressor is from Huxworks. Obviously, if you've seen my video about that suppressor, it's a 556 suppressor. This is a 30 cal suppressor. So I did get 556 five, caps and direct thread. So this is a 0.224 diameter end cap that you replace on here. This is for Bravo mounts, which is what the Omega 300 is. And then we got a uh, half inch by 28 threaded Bravo direct thread mount, which will replace this. Now, I'm doing that because one, yeah, I want to see what baffle does compared to flow through. Try and get some sort of reading on what it actually does. You know, um, yes, there's more back pressure here, obviously, by the flow through name. It pushes those gases forward and flows through the suppressor instead of going back. But there is still back pressure, supposedly not nearly as much. There's also the volume issue. Apparently, flow-throughs are a little bit less quiet because their main focus is shooting things forward, whereas baffled suppressors are very quiet. So I want to see how those compare out of a normal DI gun. But then I also have short-stroke piston 
AR that I built that I want to see again, how these compare with a piston versus a direct impingement system. If you don't know a direct impingement system, your typical AR, you have your gas tube. So you have your gas port in the barrel, your gas block, and then that shoots the gas up into that gas tube and back into your receiver, obviously making gas go back into your receiver. There's also gas that gets pushed back from baffled suppressors. Well, any suppressors. So a piston, yes, there's still a gas port, and yes, there's still a gas block. However, there's not a gas tube. It is a piston rod that gets pushed back. So the rod is just solid. No gas is going back into the receiver. And I want to see how much that has to do with how much gas gets kicked back based on different receivers or different suppressors. I can go ahead and tell you, I've seen with my Huxworks that gas still gets blown back. You know, you can tell when you pull out the magazine how much gas is being blown back into the upper receiver because you see the gas build up on the ammo. Yeah, so I'm curious. I think it's pretty cool that they send you these. Oh, hey, yeah, it is a 5 8 by 24. It's just really tiny and faint on there. I'm super excited to see how this goes. I can go ahead and tell you this is significantly lighter and it's full configuration like this, then the Huxworks, uh, I believe it's the HQQD, might be wrong on that. That is, I believe, nearly a pound. I think it's like 14, 13 or 14 ounces. Uh, this feels probably closer to half a pound, maybe a little bit over. That could be uh, a thing that you need to consider because having nearly a pound at the front of your muzzle adds a lot more weight. We'll see how this goes and this will th these tests will determine what suppressors I end up getting going forward. Um, I have my theories already, but I'm going to save those for when I actually do the comparison between these. Thanks for watching guys.